What's up guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have top eight finisher from Atlantic City Regionals, Michael Catron. What's up, Michael? Uh, hello. <laughs> I'm Michael. I write for Simone's PC, and I'm on Team Nerd Rage Gaming. Well, yeah, that's that's Michael in a nutshell. Um, so you played Malamar, uh, despite everyone saying Malamar was a bad deck. Uh, so talk to us a little bit how you got to the conclusion of playing Malamar. Um, well, Malamar started, and I was playing an online cash tournament, and I was on Skype with Jonathan Croxton, and, uh, I didn't have a deck chosen when my round started, so I just clicked on Psychic Malamar that Bradner had built on the account, and played it. Probably the worst list for a deck I've ever played, and I almost won, and we were like, alright, Malamar's actually pretty good if I can almost win with this list. Then, uh... Went through some four or five cups, just refining the list, and then after some talking with Alex Shemansky, we settled on the list I played. Uh, you played some weird cards, like the Giratina Prism. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Uh, that was something uh, we decided pretty last minute. I think it was the day before. Uh, we wanted a counter for EVGX, and originally we had a promo detective Pikachu Mewtwo GX in our deck. And the idea okay. behind that was that it snipes 50 and you'd use it to knock out Vulpix so that the EVGX wouldn't be as impactful. And that was pretty good. But last minute, we found out about Garatina Prism Star, and that just seemed better to one-shot the EV. Sure. Um, anyway, I guess I will let you go into your tournament report, then. All right. So round one, I play against Ability Zard, and lo and behold... They start EVGX, and uh, it actually didn't end up mattering. Um, I just kind of rolled them both games. Uh, nothing too interesting happened. They didn't draw very well in game two. I set up both games, and spell tags just kind of did work. Uh, round two, played against Abilities Art again. Game one, he played six consecutive welders. Uh, I end up losing that game by one damage because I don't find a distortion door the entire game. So I'm not able to Esper his Bidene. Uh Game three, he doesn't play a... Or game two, he doesn't play a Welder. And I just roll him. Uh, and then game three, I Stellar Wish five times, don't get a supporter, and just lose. Sure. Uh, round three, I hit a mirror match. Uh, my opponent didn't really know what to do in the matchup. Uh, I was pretty confident in it. Uh, I used my two Mews to snipe a lot of damage and set up knockouts, and he wasn't able to keep pace with that. And then uh, round four, I played against a Pikaram. Uh, this game was interesting. I wasn't able to get a Mew down either game, so he was able to use his Tag Bolt to knock out two Malamars <coughs> both games, and I wasn't able to have any Malamars to play after that. But uh, I still had my Garatina that was attacking the turn before, and I ended up stabilizing both games. Uh, after a bit of a misplay in game one, uh, he whiffed custom catchers, so I won. And then uh, in game two, he his start wasn't as good. Mine was very strong. He still got the tag bolt later in the game, but it didn't matter, sure. and I 2 would him. Um, the next round, I played against a green threshy and uh i didn't think i could win this matchup at all going <laughs> in this was a very bad matchup and he played a lot of healing but uh he ended up misplaying in games one and three where he benched a second reshi sword twice, which lets me when he knocks out my active i just put the spell tag on the bench and eventually i'm able to esper the bench one and since they will have been healing progressively the active it'll just get knocked out eventually because it'll still have damage on it. So yeah. that's how that how games one and three went. Uh, game two, he lost Purge, my Garatina, really early. And I couldn't get an attacker going fast enough to respond to that. Sure. Uh, next round, I played against a Nagquag. I played Alex Smetna. Uh, he, this matchup, I, was, I knew I pretty much could not lose. Uh, I ended up misplaying game one because I forgot about the 10 damage base from Towering Splash, but he whiffed double custom catcher on my Malamar that 80 on it, so it didn't matter. 
And then game two, I just benched a Mew, and he lost. Um, then I played against a ability uh, Mewtwo, which was Jose Marrero, and we decided to ID at 5-1. Uh, so that was, that was a bit interesting. Can you, can you talk to us about the decision that led you to making this ID? Because it's a very non-traditional time to ID. Um, I was tired, so <laughs> <laughs> I offered the ID. Or, well, Jose offered it first, and then I was like, nah. I drew my hand. It was I had supporters, but like it wasn't a great hand. And I was like, I'll take the ID. And he, then we like went back and forth a little bit. And we ended up doing it. Um, it worked out. We both made day two, so um, that's how that went. Uh, the next round, I played against an ability zard. Game one uh, went pretty poorly for me. I didn't get attacking fast, and I was gonna scoop pretty early, but I did see some win condition, and I played it out, and then that went away. But there's only like two turns left in the game, so I figured. Might as well just see if anything else comes up, write down his, like, fire crystal counts or whatever. And uh, he ends up stellar wishing and picks up his entire deck, which was very low amount, but still had more than five cards. And he got a double prize penalty. And then my entire board had spell tags, and there was a 30 damage Jirachi on his bench. So he checkmated himself through a double prize. What are you going to do about and that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, we take those, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, game two, he drew really bad. Didn't play welders early. I got going really fast and just kind of rolled him. Uh, then in my ninth round, I played against a Malamar Mirror against uh, Marcus Guy. Um, he had a Jinx in his deck, which I did not, so that was a bit scary. But I still ended up winning game one through a cross divide after setting up all the damage. He went aggro with Tina's and bench locked himself out of SB on Deoxys. So that was really cool. And then uh, I just didn't take a knockout until I knew he couldn't win through SB on and I had enough energies on my SB on to win the next turn. Got it. Um, game two, I drew pretty poor. He drew kind of well. I didn't draw spell tags, and he won pretty fast. Uh, game three, I know we have a little bit of time left, and I don't know if we're going to be able to finish, but uh, he just completely bricks, and I just start going in with Shadow Impact, and I take six prizes. Uh, so going into day two, I'm 7-1-1. One, and one. Uh, Pretty good day. My only loss being Ability Zard, and... There's not much abilities art in day two. Yep, the field's <laughs> looking like a lot of Mew 3, a lot of Picaram in day two. Uh, a couple of Pidgeys, but yeah. uh, the me the meta's looking favorable. There's like one green Zard up there at your record, I think. Um, yep. But otherwise, like there's like Quagnags and like stuff that Malamar wants to see if it can make it that far. <clears throat> yep. So um, you head into day two. Give me that. Uh, day two, uh, round one, I hit a Mewtwo. And I've actually never played the matchup. I've played zero <laughs> test games, and here we are. So I'm pretty happy I'm playing against this in round 10, so at least I can get a feel for the matchup before it's an important round. And uh, game one, he doesn't get off. I win the coin flip. Or no, he won the coin flip but didn't get a welder, so he couldn't do the cross divide play. Yep. So that was huge. And then uh, I ended up rolling him after that. Uh, game two, I still think he doesn't get off the cross the fight play, but my start's just too slow and he rolls me. Um, game three, uh, I set up super well and there's a point where his hand's pretty bad and I had damaged my Tina with my own thing, mm -hmm. my own uh, the shadow impact, and he looks at his hand. I had, uh, there's a Dedane on his bench with 130, and he's just like, my hand's dead. I have to knock this out, and I don't have Drachi in play. So he takes the knockout. I go 30 on Dedane, knock it out, 10 on the Mewtwo. Next turn, Distortion Door, knock out his, uh, and uh, Shadow Impact to knock out the Mewtwo because he doesn't have Drachi EGX. And uh, he's, I have one prize left. He looks at his hand, and he's just like, I can't win in scoops. 
And then uh, round 10, or round 11, I hit Isaiah Bradner, another Mewtwo. Uh, game 1, he turned to uh, Cross Divide, kills my whole board, and I lose. <laughs> uh, this would actually have been a really good uh, game had I not prized my Tina Prism Star, because I would have been able to put three Psychics on it, turn 1, and had an attacker going in after his uh, Big Cross problem. Divide. But uh, Tina was prized, so that didn't work out. And then um, game two, uh, he didn't draw too hot. I set up fast, and I won the game. Uh, game three, he whiffs the psychic energy, and I and he whiffs his. Uh, yeah, he whiffs the psychic energy, so he doesn't get these cross divide. And so I'm in a very strong spot. Later on, he gets to do the cross divide play, and he has to kill a Tina and a Jirachi because he had to bench lock himself with his last, he was a fifth bench spot with a Dedenne, or he just loses the game. And okay. with that Dedenne, he had to discard his Jirachi. Oh. So that was pretty important. And so he kills my Tina, he kills my thing. And then this is, this turn, neither of us remember what actually happened. Uh,. But we're pretty sure I just went in and I used Mew to snipe his uh, FB on Deoxys that was on his bench. Uh, he goes down to three prizes. I use Mew again to hit the FB on Deoxys. Uh, the next turn I go, he's at two <coughs> prizes. And I set up a board where I have um, a Shadow Impact to knock out his active because there's no Drachi. And then the FB on Deoxys on his bench has enough damage on it to where my Esper will kill it eventually. And I still only have one Malmar in play, so I can't do this consecutively, but he has two prizes left, and he can't knock out my Garatina the next turn because he doesn't have another Mewtwo on the bench. So the max amount of damage he can do is 120. And he can't snipe ever because he has no catchers left, and it'll, only, it'll take an extra turn for him to get enough energies to use Naganadel. And uh, if he does that, then I use Esper for game. Yep. So I knock out. He sends up something that uh, I can't one-shot. And he basically just needs me to either not have Shrine or forget to use Distortion Door for my other Garatina to put 10 on his new Mewtwo. I Distortion Door the Mewtwo, and he concedes. So I got pretty lucky in that matchup, I won't lie, and was able to close out the game three, and that was pretty nice. So... Then round 12, I hit Grant, and he's playing Pidgey, so another matchup, zero games played against it. Um, going in, I asked Azul how to play it. He kind of explained it to me where I want to use Mimikyu to make, try and make a perfect deck, but I never attacked with Mimikyu in the matchup. Uh, I just used my two Mews, set up a bunch of damage, and got to a point where five of the Pokemon on his board had 10 health, and then there was an Oranguru that had uh, 120 left. And he kind of went super aggro on milling. And, and, and because he couldn't get his Jirachi out of the active for too long, he never used resource management. So we reached a really interesting spot in the game where I had to take the five knockouts or I decked. <coughs> and uh, then he would do the chip chip lock on me. But he'd miss one turn of Chip Chip somewhere down the line. And neither of us expected to win the game. I thought my deck had too many dead cards in it for me to win. And he thought he was going to whiff the Chip Chip too many times to win the game. So he offers the ID and I take it. So that was, that was really interesting. Uh, so now one more win and I'm at least bubble for top eight. And if I win the first one, then I can ID in and be guaranteed. Uh, this round, I hit the greens, Rashi's hard. And I'm like, oh my god, are you serious? I can't win this matchup. And again, the opponent misplays. They put down a second <laughs> Rashi's hard. And I just start spell tagging it so I can Esper it. And the active has a ton of damage from earlier in the game, and I win. I'm just like, okay, I need them to do that one more time. Game two, they dead draw 
and they put down the second Reshizard. And I'm just like, all right, uh, somehow we did it. I beat another Greens, 2-0'd it, uh, and was locked myself for top eight round. Next round, I ID'd with Danny Altavilla and put myself in the top eight. Right. And then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, now you're in top eight. Uh, bracket looks kind of good for you. Um, I don't think there's too many matchups you don't want to hit here. Uh, you said the Mewtwo is a little bit scary after you played it a couple times. Yep. So I think Mewtwo is the only thing you really want to do avoid. But uh, otherwise, you know, field looked pretty good. Yeah. So uh, in top eight, I hit Grant again. <laughs> and we're both like, all right. We both think that who, if one of us, whoever wins this matchup, we both think we're winning the event. Okay. And uh, <coughs> going in, neither of us wanted to play each other. So <laughs> that didn't work out. But I followed the same strategy I had. I win game one because he prized this rocket's handiwork. Uh, it was really close game, but uh, I did sneak it out. It was kind of unlucky to get to a position where if he had handiwork, I lost. But that's kind of just how it happened. Um, then game two happens. And I just kind of roll in this game. He uses Articuno at one point, and then when he does that, I go in with my Tina Prism Star and hit it for 160, so that's 10 health left. Okay. Uh, I end up uh, Psychic Clubbing to take a knockout. And throughout the game, he's Mars twice, and off the Mars, he's hit uh, Recycle Energy and a Switch. Yikes. Okay. So the two are just the best cards you could hit. So that was really unfortunate. And then uh, we get to a point in the game where he goes Custom Catcher, and his board is an Oranguru with no damage in the active, a Pidgey with full health, a Pidgey with 10 left, a Pidgey with 10 left, and an Articuno with 10 left. I have five prizes left, and for some reason, it just didn't click that I had game on board. I go switch to Malamar, retreat the energies, and send up my Mew that has an energy on it. And I Psychic Recharge twice to my Deoxys, so I have six, because for some reason, I was thinking I needed all the energies on it. I guess the logic was that I would need one more, uh, need all six prizes. I don't know. And, uh, I missed game. That was completely my fault. And he goes crushing hammer heads, discards my energy off Mew and I'm out of energies. So I get decked out. Uh, then going into game three, I know there's not a lot of time left. Both games were very long. And I'm just like, I'm very confident I'm still going to win the game, even after that horrendous misplay. Because Pidgey can't take Prive this faster yeah. than Malamar. And it's like, I open my hand. I got like two Acrobites, a Viridian, Mew, and Ditto. Uh, play the Acrobites, Viridian, look at my hand. All right, we have Mimikyu and a Malamar. How did we get here? Um, he plays his turn, counters my Viridian, discards my energy off Mew, and I'm just like, oh no. Draw for turn, it's the fourth spell tag. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm actually gonna get outprized by Pidgey. He ends up attaching the next turn, chip chipping, I draw, my hand is now just four spell tags and two Malamars. He attaches again, chip chips, uh, no, I draw another dead card. He goes, ret or like, a skateboard retreat, knock out my Mew, and time's already been called at this point. I draw, and I lose prizes to Pidgeotto. Which is <clears throat> uh, unreal. <laughs> yeah. So that must, uh, that must have sucked. I, I'm sorry to hear about that. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, still top eight, not a shabby finish. Uh, looking into Knoxville, would you say that uh, Malamar is still a strong deck, or do you think the meta shifts in a way where you would shy away from Malamar? Uh, I think <clears throat> Malamar is definitely still my top pick. I'm almost 100% playing it. Um, I'd probably cut the Tina Prism Star for a Latios moving forward. <coughs> um, with the meta shifting to Mewtwo, obviously, and Guardian, because Guardian is good against Mewtwo. Uh, that card kind of just beats both decks, and pretty good overall it can also help against greens but you're still probably going to lose versus a good player sure um and 
I think Malamar's still great. I'm probably playing it. Going to play it at some cups this weekend too. Those are my cups. Unfortunate. Um, <laughs> so, well, okay, Sean, thank you for being here. I'll leave the floor to you for shout outs. Anyone you want to thank, anyone you want to sponsors, you want to plug, whatever you want to do, where can people find you on social media? The drill. All right. Uh, so shout outs to my sponsors, team nerd rage gaming. Uh, <clears throat> they have a website, nerdragegaming.com. Um, <laughs> So you can buy stuff there. And then I write for someone's PC. My articles are pretty hot. I'm not going to lie. I wrote an article about why PCROM is awful. And PCROM is still awful. Um, uh, shout out to Alex Shemansky for helping me with the list. Definitely was very happy with the 60 we played. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Well, thank you, man. I'll have this posted soon. All right. Peace All out, right. guys. Thank you for watching.